Okay. Um, thanks a lot, Mark. Right. Um, our uh, next speaker uh, is uh, Christina Vosko, Vosko, sorry, Voskoglu. Um, sorry about that, Christina. Um, she is the Senior du Director of Research at Slash Data. Christina is a data scientist. She's passionate about bridging the gap between companies, customers, um, companies and customers through data and research. Uh, Christina has got a track record of designing initiatives from problem definitions all the way through to targeted customer outreach through data insights. Uh, so Christina is joining us from the UK. Um, welcome, Christina, to API Days. Hello, Saul. Thank you very much. Don't worry about my name. It's it's Greek to many people, so it's fine. <laughs> yes. All right. So, shall I start? Yes. So, hey, everyone. Um, very glad to join you in API Days Australia. Today, we'll be talking about the impact of digital acceleration on two things. First, on developers themselves and how they work. And second, on API demand. Before I do that, just quickly who we are, because I'm going to show you lots of data, as usual. Um, so you need to know where that comes from. So we are um, slash data. We survey more than 30,000 developers annually across several, several developer sectors. I'll show you in a minute. And based on this data, we strive to understand and tell the world who developers are, so developer personas you might say, how big their communities are, what they buy, so basically what technology choices they make, and where they're going next, so the future of several emerging um, technologies that we have observed over the years, either being hyped and then dying or continuing and thriving. So as I said, we survey um, more than 30,000 developers annually. We do that through two survey waves uh, per year. We've done that 21 times already. We reach more than 150 countries every time. We do that through a wide network of partners and channels, more than 80 and not the same 80 every time to make sure that we don't capture the views of a single panel, but rather um, of many and very diverse um, sets and sub pockets, let's say, of developer population out there. Where we research all these 11 development areas you see here on the left, so mobile, desktop, web, and so on. And we do so, so we include all of those in our service because we know that developers are active in more than one simultaneously. So we want to capture the full picture of their activity. Right, and with that out of the way, um, this is our agenda. Um, first of all, uh, we're gonna see if developers think that um, COVID-19 remote working effects are here to stay. We asked them so in our previous uh, survey. Then, very fresh from the press, from our latest survey, um, we are going to show you whether developers would actually leave their employers uh, to have extra flexibility and to be able to work remotely. So therefore, if as a result of everything, they're now after really the flexibility. And then last but not least, we'll discuss about what has been happening in the demand for APIs over the past years. <clears throat> okay. First of all, uh, how COVID-19 has impacted developers. So um, we asked them whether as a result of COVID-19, they had to change the way they work uh, or the way they study. Um, and as you can see, 37% said no, no effects, whether they either had already been remote or, or they had never been remote. So mind that 25% there, we'll see that again in a minute. Um, Others have seen some effect, um, some more per permanent, uh, others um, don't expect it to last. And um, I'll also point to that 7% here at the bottom. So we have 7% losing their jobs. Now, um, it is said that the tech industry was one of the least affected uh, during the pandemic, um, given all the opportunities for new projects and work in the field. Um, however, this is still sizable. So 7% uh, of the people did lose their jobs. Um, putting those numbers again into and shuffling them around. And I'll also so show you, since we're discussing uh, Australia here, so you um, Oceania as an example of how things may look different in different regions. But first, let's focus on the left. 
Um, so remember, this is the 25% to show you. So 25, so one quarter of all developers were remote already, mostly in smaller companies. Um, but you see the other two blue colors here. So another 22 are the newly remote, either permanently remote, uh, either um, fully or partially. That means that nearly half, 47% developers global, globally are now working remotely. And that has several implications um, with respect to what they need, um, how they should be reached, and so on. Now, as you can see here on the right, Shen is slightly different, actually quite a lot different. Um, first of all, uh, happily not, well, still 3% people lost their jobs, but it's less than half of what happened globally. Um, and instead, there was a double the, the, the share of people that actually went part-time. See, it was 11% globally who went um, uh, partially remote and expect this to last, while in Oceania that was 23, more than double. So Oceania reacted um, by more than, than the global average, by going remote more than others. And as a result, you have 37% new permanently remote, remote developers, either fully or partially. And therefore, nearly 60%, that's really big, uh, it was 22 before and now it's 60, are now remote as a result. Again, that implies uh, quite a lot as to how to reach them, DevRel, how to do DevRel for these developers and so on. So, of course, that didn't affect all developers in the same way. And it's not just within regions that we see differences, it's also across company sizes. Um, the red line here are those who went fully remote um, as a result of COVID, while green is those who were not affected at all. And you can see obviously that freelancers, well, they were at the office anyway, um, on their own, so it didn't really matter to them. However, big orgs here, more than 50%, 51 actually, um, so half went fully remote due to COVID. Of course, that was not by choice. In many cases, it was big orgs, you know, closing the doors as a result of COVID and people having to go home. So therefore, there are several factors. And again, behind the regional differences, there may be the, the mix of company sizes that you see within those regions and so on. But it's just to give you an idea that it's not just an average. You have to look into the differences within regions, different company sizes and so on. Okay, so many people had to move remote, but is it something that they have come to value and actually ask for? So you are the very first to set eyes on this data. This is very fresh uh, Q3 uh, survey, so now basically. Um, again, I'm comparing here Oceania to um, the global average, global total. And this time we asked them what would make them leave their current employer for another. Of course, higher compensation, career advancement are right at the top, um, as you would expect, maybe because these are what we call hygiene factors. Um, there are huge differences there within regions, and you can see that Australia is, uh, sorry, Shane is lagging behind. Uh, we see that similarly in North America and Western Europe and so on, while it's really high for Eastern Europe, for example, um, and in, in regions such as uh, Oceania, we see uh, culture mat matters most, and um, also they're very loyal, they wouldn't easily move to another employer, or, or it's more common to get that answer in Shane rather than the rest of the world. But what I really want to focus on today, there'll be more about that in our upcoming State of Developer Nation report in about a month, if you want to read more details on this. But today, I want to focus on this. That says that 27%, so nearly one in three, would actually leave their employer for the ability to work remotely. So it does matter. And in some parts of the world, as I will show you in a minute, it matters more than in others. Another 20% or 20% in total say that they also value more flexible working options. And there are also those who are looking for, okay, we're not going to be remote, <coughs> excuse me, but at least we want better physical work environment um, or they want to be closer to home. Now, what is interesting here, other than the actual 
size of these numbers is that ability to work remotely is ahead of the other three. So it's not that they want to, to work remotely so much to be at home, right? Because that gets 9%, which is big, but it's still at the bottom. It's something else. So uh, we'll see what that is, but putting everything together, at the end of the day, 40%, nearly 40% of, of, of developers would actually quit their job for another if they were offered a remote job or flexible working options. Um, and half, that's kind of quite a lot, value these things. So remote working, flexible options, close to home, better physical work environment. Now, these are important even if you're not hiring developers, even if developers are, let's say, your clients and you're reaching out to them. These are important even for DevRel purposes because those, if, for example, you have a business um, support program or a mentoring program, um, you have to keep in mind that these things now matter to nearly half of developers globally. Again, Oceania may be different, just to show you that regions can be different. Um, as I said, regions can be very different. So, and this will also explain why remote working is appreciated as much as it is. So singling out ability to work remotely and more flexible working options and seeing what different regions have to say. You see that Middle East and Africa is sticking out here for the, so nearly 35% of developers in that region um, would quit their job for the ability to work remotely. And they're followed by South America. Then it's South Asia, but it's marginally higher than the others. Um, while Oceania actually and China are lagging behind. What that shows, and other data behind it also agrees, um, is that remote working to these people is not just a chance to work from home, right? Um, they value that the same as everybody else. It's just that in these cases, in regions where the local developer job market may be limited, may be offering limited opportunities, remote working actually opens the world to them for remote working. So this is what remote um, has done, and this is why it is being valued. While flexible working options are valued in other regions, mostly in East Asia, excluding China, and not China, that where uh, neither flexibility nor remote working is valued as much, um, uh, possibly because um, they're in these regions, so in greater China, maybe um, home office settings are not so much um, common, and therefore people are used to uh, working in, in large orgs, um, and therefore there's not value that much. But this is just to show you what remote working has done, and it has a major impact in uh, the more emerging um, regions, such as Middle East and Africa, and uh, science, uh, South Africa, South America, sorry. Um, okay, and then moving on to what um, uh, this has done to API demand. So this sort of transformation uh, has done to API demand. Um, so as you can see here, um, it's not about, well, we, we don't see an overall change in the API usage, not a significant one. But what we do see is the, the penetration of APIs in the different jobs that developers have to do. So what I'm showing you here is the number of API categories. So payment APIs, email APIs, video, voice, these are different categories, right? And we find that as time goes by, uh, the average developer, so the single developer is using more of these types, more of these categories, right? So currently, as you can see, um, it's 31% here. So nearly one in three now use five plus different types of APIs. So while the overall usage, so how many developers use third-party APIs has not changed that much, it's around 72%, um, those who do use them tend to use more of it. So that's what's happening. Now, which categories? Um, have seen, because if we're seeing 
developers using more categories, then you might expect most, if not all of them, to see an increase. That's not the case. So here I'm showing you. Uh, so we track many, many API categories. But here I'm just showing you the ones that saw the biggest change, even in the last six months. It's a usage change in percentage points. Um, and you can see it's authentication, location, payments, and e-commerce, so the biggest increase. And you can see the percentages here on the right. Um, but there are others who actually saw a drop, despite the fact that developers use more API categories. And um, for example, machine learning saw some uh, decrease there, uh, messaging and email. In some cases, it's a matter of having a, a hype deflating, um, but um, overall, and they were you know, correcting their, their percentages. So these were the um, categories more affected. Now, the other thing that has happened is that we see um, not just more API categories being used, um, so, but in the same way, we see more penetration of APIs in the so-called vertical industries even in the software um, industry itself. Um, so right now, and actually these are the, te the top 10, these are the 10 industries where we saw a significant um, increase. Um, and you can see insurance is at the top there, 6 percentage points higher, and 76% currently um, of developers in insurance are using um, APIs, third-party APIs. Um, food and agricultural and so on. Um, software is still there, which is interesting. Uh, it's still growing uh, in within that industry. You would think that it was, would be the most mature, uh, but yet obviously there's still space um, for more API usage. Therefore we see an increase. And otherwise we have, you can see financial services here, entertainment, all sorts of uh, interests. So of course there are others, who um, didn't see any, not just didn't see any increase, but actually saw some sort of um, decrease in the use of APIs, and that was uh, like government and defense and uh, even manufacturing, unfortunately. So um, again, as with number of API categories, what we observe here is an increase in uh, penetration. So how broadly uh, APIs are used, although not necessarily by uh, a higher percentage of people. Of course, it is a higher number of people because as the developer population is growing, that same percentage translates into more um, developers um, out there. So um, based on everything I've told you, there are seven key takeaways. Um, one is that the digital transformation has heavily impacted how developers work. Um, and now nearly half are working remotely, either fully or partially, while that was 25%. Um, so the, the percent of developers who are now remote has actually doubled. And these are people who expect to remain that way, which has um, several implications when it comes not just to hiring, um, but also how you do DevRel. Um, it was developers in large organizations that were affected the most. Half of, of those in the really large orgs of 5K plus employee companies remote, reported moving to uh, fully remote as a result of uh, COVID-19. Um, so uh, it, it uh, remains to be seen to what extent those who remain that way. And um, we will see how that goes. Now, another thing that we said is that nearly 40% of developers globally would actually leave their current employer for an opportunity to work remotely or, or have more flexible working. Again, um, therefore, we're talking about not just of an implication due to COVID that has caused, you know, that 25% that we said earlier becoming 50, is that it's also created an appetite, let's say, uh, for remote working or people realizing in regions where their local markets are quite limited in terms of opportunities offered, um, they now realize they have an option 
they can go remote um, and tap on the opportunities that exist globally, not just in their region. Um, and as a result, remote working is valued most in the Middle East and Africa and South America as it opens these doors to them. Um, in terms of the API usage, developers are using increasingly more types of APIs, although not overall more. Uh, so the overall usage has remained roughly the same, although that does translate to more, more developers as the overall population grows. Um, but we, what we see is a higher penetration of APIs into different jobs um, that the developers um, have to do. And the three categories that saw the biggest increase were authentication, location, and payment APIs. And the penetration also increased across the vertical industries, uh, significantly so in actually 10 industries in 2021. And the top two were insurance, uh, food, and agriculture. And OK, that's all I had for you today. I hope you found it useful. Um, we also have a book on DevRel. Uh, we didn't write it. It's 24 authors from leading um, companies on DevRel. Um, and if you head to our booth now, you get 50% off. So that's me. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Christina. Um, that was a really fascinating talk. And it's great to see data. <laughs> <I love laughs> Thank you. Data and facts. Um, so. Lots of questions out of that. Um, mm -hmm. I I don't know if you uh, are aware, but in Australia, we've had a huge um, increase in the rate at which developers are changing jobs because mm -hmm. the borders are closed. That's put a constraint on the market. Um, uh, salaries are going up, and people are leaving for uh, you know. Bet more dollars, basically, I think, in a lot of cases. So it's kind of up the uh, the, the churn rate um, <clears throat> with developers. Are you, have you seen any of this? Do you, would you see any of that in your data? Are you seeing this in other parts of the world as a as a byproduct of COVID? And the and I guess the lack of uh, the lack of um, uh, um, uh, movement, if you. Uh, I'm struggling to get the word. The, the inability to cross borders, basically, the, the lack of mobility is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, so uh, as I showed you, um, actually, borders don't matter anymore that much for many yeah. developers. And especially, I guess that is exactly why we saw double the percentage of people in, in Australia um, going into remote work possibly exactly because they they left their current job and they went on to a remote role where for a company that is not based in Australia even. So um, that's what we see and, and possibly that's why or you know current companies just went remote to keep everyone there. So we, we saw less people losing their jobs in Oceania. Um, we see lots of variation across regions. P different regions react in different ways, depending also how much they were affected or how strict the rules were. Um, but I am um, hopeful and glad in a way to see that um, the, the, the whole ecosystem reacted by creating actually more opportunities out of the challenges. Um, mm. and, and that's why you see all those people from um, you know, the less privileged, let's say, regions where the local job market is not booming yet, um, that they now can access other jobs across the globe. So um, I think that's also how Shani reacted, how Australia reacted uh, to, to some extent. Um, you know, either they, you saw that less people lost their jobs, so they either stuck with what they had, or they are reacted by going remote and finding something else elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. I think um, the whole shift to remote. I mean, it was it was startlingly sudden. Um, literally, uh, from my perspective, it literally happened overnight. 
Um, and I think that's probably the case with a lot of people. And it stayed that way a lot longer than I anticipated. Um, I think there's been some real benefits out of going remote, but also um, kind of downsides as well. Um, one of the things I think potentially a reduction in the culture, in the, the togetherness, if you like, of, mm. of being in the office with each other. And I saw a report um, just the other day that talked about uh, an increased siloization of remote workers. So we we don't we we don't have the, those serendipitous um, bumping into each other at the water cooler or the coffee uh, machine anymore. So therefore, those um, those serendipitous uh, um, uh, interactions, which are often you know completely different departments opportunities for um for stepping outside of your normal routine or your normal knowledge space has mm -hmm. sort of gone away now and that's some people are saying well maybe that's a an impediment on on innovation or a, you know a bit of friction against innovation there but do you have any thoughts on that maybe yeah a couple also from personal experience so um smaller companies and i showed that in the company um graph um were remote anyway by design yep. so that didn't affect them and quite a lot of innovation comes from small companies so i don't think um that was an issue um and actually and because we found ourselves doing that um when this whole thing happened the smaller companies that were used to working that way we found ourselves educating others the, the new remote on how to do it. Um, and it is indeed challenging to uh, maintain um, a, a sense of belonging and a, a common culture. It's not so easy. And I suppose when we're talking about large orgs, it's it's getting more and more difficult because it's really, okay, it's a one thing keeping 30 and 50 people at sync. It's a different, very different people keeping 5,000 people at sync remotely. So I understand what you say, however, um, and perhaps that's why in, in, in areas where you have really big organizations, I'm going to look at this, as I said, this is very fresh. We haven't dug into it fully, but um, it's most likely uh, folks in, in the really large orgs that do not value remote so much because suddenly they lost all that world that um, they were used to. Um, <clears throat> but as you said, there are also uh, lots of benefits. So. I would think that uh, eventually we will find a balance. Uh, I'm not in favor of always being remote and being isolated. Obviously, nobody is. It's against our nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, on the other hand, we should be able to give people options because by being remote, you can work from wherever, basically, uh, as long as you have a good connection, I suppose. Um, so there are pros and cons. As with everything, this is new. Uh, fairly new um, as people were you know forced and thrown into the whole situation but um, it will work for some but not for others in a nutshell that's what I'm trying to say and we should find our balance pretty soon yes indeed I think it'll be it'll be really interesting and, and I hope a lot more fulfilling to find our individual balance and I think our employers are kind of willing to let us do that which is a, a good thing yeah. Okay. Um, thanks a lot, Christina. That was a great Thank presentation. So. I really enjoyed that. Thanks, so. Bye.